Hello, my name is Ted Kravis. I work for the Sherwin Weems Company, and I am manager of the Industrial Applications Group. And this here is Dan Prudeau, my senior developer. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank Inductive Automation for inviting us to uh, to this uh, discussion today. And we'd also like to thank the uh, ARC Advisory Group for hosting this conference. Last week, Dan and I were looking over the companies that all of you work for, and the list is very impressive. And we are honored to speak to you today. Over the past few years, Dan and I have worked on a series of projects involving business analytics. Some of the reoccurring concepts we found uh, seemed like such a good fit that we figured that these concepts may resonate with your companies as well. We are going to discuss those concepts and actually put them to use and build a dashboard for you. With that said, let's begin. Now, one item I'd like to tell you before we go much further is this will be more of an IT, uh, from the angle of an IT group as opposed to engineering. So it's a little different twist than what you just saw. The Sherwin Williams Company is a global paint and coatings company that has been in business for almost 150 years. In North America alone, we have over 3,500 stores and 40 manufacturing facilities. You may not be able to see this on the graph, but there are a variety of different manufacturing sites, including architectural paint plants, uh, powder coating sites, caulk plants, brush and applicator sites. Dan and I are part of the IT team, uh, IT team responsible for solutions to a variety of manufacturing and automation projects. Our primary customers are operations and quality. Over the past few years, Sherwin Williams has been one of Computer World's top 100 IT places to work for. This is the problem that we will be addressing today. Manufacturers and supervisors wanted a consolidated view of performance metrics in an easily understood format. Operators needed real-time feedback on their performance versus goal. Some other considerations. No two factories are alike. We need visibility from the factory floor all the way to headquarters. We need to turn data into actionable information, both real-time and historical. How do we remain agile as business needs change? How do we get buy-in from a large number of sites? How do we begin? Dan? Thank you, Ted, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Dan Prudo, and I'm a software developer working for TED on the Industrial Applications Group. Um, I also wanted to start off by saying that I was very impressed with Doug's dashboard, and it, it was good to see what a you know, well thought out, mature analytics strategy can yield. And what we're going to show you is something a little bit different, I think. So we want to show you designing and developing of a simple enterprise dashboard from an IT perspective. Let's say you don't have that budget yet. You don't have those resources yet. You just kind of want to see what you can get started with because that's really how we started out. So we want to step you through um, basically just uh, the thought process, I guess you would say, for building one of these dashboards. And what we found is the best practice is to really start simple. Um, we want to find the minimum data elements to drive the initial metrics. What are those initial metrics? Well, we have, uh, as Ted pointed out, a few dozen sites out there. And you know we have a lot of relationships from other projects we've done with those sites. So. We find a site where we know there's going to be engaged personnel, um, a crew that believes in uh, you know, data-driven decision-making and visual performance management. Uh, what we often find, and you may find as well, is that some common starting metrics are going to be OEE or, or uptime or, or run rates, things like that. And these things are all based on counts. So let's start with a very simple table. And all we have here are counts over time. This is uh, something pretty easy to implement. There's a lot of choices for software out there to get it. And, and there's a good chance that those counts actually exist out there in one of your PLCs or, or SCADA systems. Um, you know, wouldn't be surprised that that's actually a pretty easy starting point. Now, just from this time series data of counts, we can represent a few things. We can show a simple plot of, that, of the units throughout the day, and we can see the line going up. Um, we can add a few extra parameters very easily to our database. Um, for like ideal cycle time and downtime thresholds, common OEE terms. And, and we can actually plot below that trend the, the little blue sections that show the equipment status. So now we can see when it was running and when it wasn't running. 
We can see times where there was extended downtime. We can see periods where there was extended runtime or periods where we were, where we were running, but we went up and down a lot. We can also, based on our schedule, uh, show an uptime percentage. We can show how much of that time was spent running versus down. Now we have another table showing up here. This is our order and product data. Um, there's a good chance you probably have that existing in one of your ERP or, or MES systems somewhere. If we pull that in, now we have a lot of other attributes about what, what was occurring at that time. We have uh, the product for that order, a packaging type, um, may, maybe some goals or, or, or when it needs to be produced by. And actually, by tying that into our historical data, simply logging the active order number on that piece of equipment, now we can also show what the order is on the dashboard. We can show maybe some goals uh, based on that order count. And, and we can also show our tact goals now. So we know when this needs to be produced by, so we can average that out by hour and show that orange line showing this is what we need to output hourly to really to meet our, our demand. I think uh, Ted wanted to add something on this point. Yeah, uh, this is a key point, the joining of machine information to the business data like order number, SKU, recipe, puts data in a context your business can understand. It also allows us to query other business systems to return additional dimensions of data to add to our dashboard. You may not notice at this point, but you have the basis for an asset utilization report right now. You have a start and the end of an order, you have an asset, piece of equipment, and you have time. You can now display a weekly view of orders on this equipment to see throughput. On that, if you saw gaps between orders where there were no counts, this effectively becomes a, your changeover time. Now another item to keep in mind is seek out existing business systems that maintain the order SKU and uh, recipe information and gather this information to combine with your counts and now you have the basis for asset utilization reports changeover monitoring, uptime reports, all without operator intervention. Without operator intervention is a very important point. Um, if it's very difficult or, or obstructive for your operators to enter that data, there's a good chance they're not or it's going to be incorrect. And it's going to be a, a severe hindrance if you don't have accurate data to work with. So as much automation and data collection uh, you can implement, um, the better your chances of success. Now, we can continue to extend our data model and add an equipment table and lines. By tying this in to our history table, now we can add any number of equipment, uh, pieces of equipment or any number of lines to our data model. All we need to do now to add more, uh, to, to expand our system is basically log the counts from the new piece of equipment and just when we're logging, say this is the piece of equipment. Now we'll also know the order number, and now we're really starting to expand the, the dimensions of data that we can view this by. Now we have a run rate versus goal. We know our ideal cycle time. This is basically one of many ways you could trend your OEE performance. And one thing we can do here, uh, if the software is flexible enough, in our experience we've had flexible enough software, is we can make all of these templates. So you can actually visualize the data in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, if you're dealing with dozens of sites, not everyone's going to want to see things the same way, but at least we can enforce uh, common representation and uh, basically we know the metrics are being derived in a similar manner. Now by having multiple uh, lines, by having this new equipment or line table, now we can show lines side by side. Now we're starting to extend to have uh, multiple pieces of equipment represented uh, using the same, same visual tools. We can take this another step further and add sites. Now we have a drop down for the Florida plant. But we could easily drop down and switch to the Ohio plant. And we also have some attributes to those sites, maybe a business unit or division it's in. So as we add these things, uh, any of these graphs you see here for counts or tact or run rates, we can really show that by any attribute of these other tables. Any order attribute you have, recipe attribute, packaging attribute, equipment attribute, all of these can be now displayed this way. And, and what we're looking at down below is really a standard dimensional data model. Um, this, these are techniques that have been done in, in IT for you know, well over 10 years in more traditional areas such as sales and marketing. But really I want to point out that it's nothing too special uh, we're doing here to start out with. We can also show some other info like the shift and maybe a, a plot of everything throughout the day. You know, really you can be pretty creative and again be flexible to allow a, you know, a lot of different users to remain happy. Tie it all together, now we have our Florida plant. Uh, we have some time frame 
maybe today you can pre-can some or make it customizable. And now we have four lines side by side. We've added a few things. There's a little yellow exclamation point if we have a certain uh, uh, uptime threshold isn't met. You can set some goals in here. Uh, we've added, uh, there's a little magnifying glass up in the corner so you can see if maybe you want to drill in, and we'll get into that in a minute, that you always want to start at this dashboard level and, and kind of guide the user towards where they can start peeling back and going deeper into the data. We also have a little comment note down at the bottom for, uh, I think it says maintenance on the packer. Uh, this is a really simple way where we can have the users kind of enter their own data and kind of in introduce that social element. It's really absolutely nothing for us to do, and we can actually monitor the types of uh, things they're typing in there, or if we have custom widgets they can uh, choose from, we can kind of see where, where things are going with our users. And that'll kind of help us, um, help allow us to make our future strategy, because we're at a point now where multiple sites are using this, and as we expand, if, if one site has a great idea and we decide to show something a little bit differently or bring in a new piece of information, instantly everyone has that information. So we are writing this once centrally and all of our plants are getting the benefit from it. We can do some other historical reports, so we just kind of toss this one up here. We can compare products against each other over time. We can compare sites against each other. We can compare, compare lines against each other. Um, probably over to the side here, we would have a little screen where um, you know, the user could pick and choose which, which dimensions of data. And really, this is kind of a slightly more customized ad hoc um, tool that you would see, again, in traditional business intelligence systems. We also have the little green disk there because we've always found it very important to always get to the raw data. Maybe not right off the bat, but always um, the more advanced analysts are going to want to get to that information. And, and we never want to hold them back from, you know, taking their own shot at it to see what they can find. Uh, so just to recap, uh, what data to display? Start simple. Choose a pilot site with personnel who are engaged with your goals. Identify your customer early and make sure they're enthusiastic about your project. Determine the minimum data elements required to drive initial metrics. Some metrics to consider, OEE, uh, uptime, production rates, counts, etc. No two factories are alike. Look for best fit in a production area. Maybe the filler is appropriate on this line, but the case packer or labeler on another line. Abstraction or derived data may be necessary. You can use, we like to use expression tags to kind of abstract data and get it to fit into our data model sometimes. Visibility everywhere from the plant floor to headquarters. Use standard web and database technologies for scalability and centralized management of your system. Be mindful of licensing restrictions. You don't want to end your project and it's just starting to catch fire and they want to move the application from the control room into the QC lab and you got to hit management up for more bucks. Utilize existing IT infrastructure to keep your costs down. Maybe you have some existing servers um, that are underutilized. We have done that in the past where we've uh, multi-purposed them. Again, we want to make sure as the amount of data we're logging grows, and mind you, in our example, we were just logging counts, and that data can get very large very quickly. But you can imagine we've, we've done more complex systems where you have temperatures and, and pressures and you know, a ton of information uh, logged with the same type of strategy, but it's going to get large very quickly, and you don't want to inundate the user with numbers. Um, kind of rehash what, what Doug said. Uh, I think humans tend to be more analog beings. We're going to respond more to graphs and charts and colors and things like that. And it's important to note that on a dashboard, similar to a dashboard in your car, you shouldn't have to look at it very long to know where you stand. You look at the dashboard when you're driving, and you know instantly whether you need gas or you're speeding. So very similar for, for this dashboard. We want to draw attention to anything that, that needs attention and uh, allow the user to drill in to kind of get more ideas of what's actually happening. But it shouldn't be something that ever really needs studied. And if everything's OK, nothing should really jump out to you, and you can just keep moving along. Now, also, historically, uh, we want to have access, obviously. And we like to do this kind of peel back layer where, from the dashboard, you can kind of, we can try and guide the user so they can manage searching through all the data that we have logged. So we, we want to guide them to that. And um, you know, we know that we have so, uh, dashboards on the plant floor. Those are on the plant floor in the lab uh, and engineering all the way up to upper level management. So we have a lot of different users looking at this data. And a lot of these different users have different comfort levels. 
Some people are never going to want to go much farther than that dashboard to look at it. Some people are going to want to get all that raw data out and go in mini tab and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And we definitely want them to do that. Um, you know, we view ourselves in IT as facilitators to this. We don't drive the projects. We, we just try and facilitate um, the process engineers and our continuous improvement analysts to do what they do best. They shouldn't worry about this database stuff. And, you know, we want to do what we do best. We want them to do what they do best. Uh, what we find is on this dashboard or, I guess, manufacturing intelligence layer, if we allow the users to, to get access to this raw data and start uh, really playing around with it, coupled with their advanced process knowledge, they're going to come back with some insights. And that's actually going to become kind of the, an iterative loop to where we can start uh, refining our dashboard to, to be more focused. And we can also uh, start to identify what those real key uh, aggregates are that need to get pushed up to the higher level business intelligence systems. It's also important for us to remain agile as business needs change. Let's say we build that little dashboard we went over a minute ago and go to some sites and say, you know, 10 other sites have it and you can have it for $3,000. And everyone says, sign me up, great. So we're going maybe a year or two in and we have a few dozen sites on and then all of a sudden the key metrics change or uh, our run rates weren't realistic or, or, or any number of things that can happen and you know it will happen. Uh, it's important for us to remain agile and, and one thing that we found to, to help mitigate that risk is to have all of our applications and database centralized in headquarters. So uh, effectively, it's a private cloud. Uh, we, we manage everything uh, in-house, but really to our customers at the sites, it's just kind of there on, on the web. So doing that allows us to, A, spend less time performing administration tasks, because if we're not configure, uh, configuring things, we're probably developing and doing more value-added tasks. Also, by storing that low-level data, um, and using some, some database trickery, we can always reprocess our metrics. So if some of our calculations change, we're usually not starting over ground zero. We can actually go back, change history, uh, tweak some parameters, do a couple iterations with that, and make sure that um, basically we're on the right track. But, but usually we never end up losing anything historically, even as metrics have changed, and they have changed for sure. How do we get buy-in from a large number of sites? Keep your costs down. Expose screens to the customer early, even if they're not complete. Engage users to leave feedback inside the application itself. Allow them to see the development occurring. As they see your, their requests being implemented quickly, they're going to stay engaged. How do we know that we succeeded? Well, look for productivity uh, improvements and uptime, run rate, changeover, product loss improvement, or process quality. Uh, in our manufacturing sites, we monitor batch uh, paint batches has helped us to get to root cause on quality issues in the factory. Visibility of these issues allows us to take proactive steps to prevent them. For filling, focus on reducing change over time. Raw material variants, look for tank levels and uh, unloading of raw materials and usage of, of raw materials. Fill variants. Look to minimize the fill variances from your targets on your boxes and your units. How do we know they like it? Track the number of users. If they don't like it, they're not going to use it. Look for continuous improvement projects using your data to justify performance gains. Monitor enhancement requests from your sites. Stay engaged with your customers. Set up monthly meetings with them to keep focus on your application and know that operators can make or break your system. Thank you.